Hello and welcome to Auto Moments. What? <laughs> okay, in all seriousness, I hope that you and your families are all safe and healthy during this unfortunate new normal we're all dealing with due to COVID-19. And since all the car shows are canceled as we socially distance ourselves, I thought it would be fun to make a simple video answering one of the age-old questions that car enthusiasts ask each other. If you had a million dollars, what cars would you buy? If I had a million dollars, would I buy you a key car? Now, in this case, I'm going to limit myself to five vehicles because otherwise we'd be here all day. And I'm sure all of you have strong opinions, so why don't you leave an answer in the comments of what your top five vehicles would be? Now, I don't really like ranking them, but to help me remember that we're going in order, I guess I'm gonna start with number five and count down, but that doesn't mean that number one is necessarily the best, it just means it's the last one I thought of. So I guess number five would be an AMC Rebel machine. And this should be no surprise to anyone. I mean, you ask an AMC fan what their favorite AMC is, and it's gonna be like one of three cars. It's either gonna be a Rebel machine, a Hearst SC Rambler, or an SS AMX which coincidentally, those are all also the most expensive AMCs too. But of all the performance AMCs, the Rebel machine is my favorite, which is interesting because it's not actually the highest performance AMC because it's a little bit bigger and heavier than say the, the Hearst Rambler. But in terms of styling, it's my favorite. I just love the look of the big C pillar going down onto the sloping trunk and that big square front end with the wide open grille and the quad headlights and the hood scoop that is aggressive but tasteful. Like I don't love massive hood scoops, but I think the one on the Rebel machine is just right. And it's just a combination of all those things topped off with that amazing red, white, and blue paint job. As you guys know, I like red, white, and blue things. I mean, we all remember my favorite shirt is red, white, and blue, which yes, I, I carry around in the car with me because I was filming another video at the same time. But anyways, I love red, white, and blue cars. I love the name The Machine because it reminds me of a computer game I used to play as a little kid called The Incredible Machine, which was kind of a contraption Rube Goldberg type thing. But anyways, there are definitely faster cars but I don't think there's any car with a bigger personality. And as I drive my very unsexy AMC Ambassador, I like to think that this is a relative of the Rebel machine. It's V8 powered, it's rear wheel drive, it has a stretched version of the same chassis that the Rebel uses. So basically, this is a Rebel machine with a lot more wood grain. All right, number four in my top five garage. Well, I have to have one truck, and for me, there's no question it's going to be an International Harvester. In this particular case, it's got to be the International Harvester Travel All, which is technically an SUV, but it's still a truck. And just like the Rebel, this is a vehicle I have wanted for a long time. Somewhere around a 1972 or 1973 model, if I'm being particular, because I like the grill style on those years. Yes, I know that International Scouts are cooler, but there's just something about how big the travel all is. I mean, you look at pictures of them, and this thing is just massive. And then the styling, it literally looks like it was drawn by a four-year-old. It's just all straight lines, and it's so chunky, but I just love the travel all. It's so huge. You can see nine people. And I think the absolute best part of the travel all were the advertisements where they show it towing a boat, a camping trailer, and an airstream all uphill. I just think that is so freaking awesome. And, you know, I'm not going to do any horrendous modifications. I'm not going to jack it up. I'm not going to put blacked out wheels and rubber band tires on it. No, I'm going to keep the original hubcaps, the original ride height. But of course, just like the Rebel machine, I really would love to get it with a stick shift. There's just something about knowing you're buying an SUV that's built by the same company that makes dump trucks and tractors. It just makes it so appealing to me. All right, number three in my fantasy garage, you gotta have at least one convertible. And everybody knows that convertibilizing a car ruins its performance ability. 
So you might as well pick a convertible that was never meant to be a performance car, which is why I am picking the 1956 Packard Caribbean. And yes, I know it's cliche. I know everybody who wants a Packard wants a Caribbean, but that's because the Caribbean is the ultimate Packard, save for maybe like some of the crazy million dollar cars they built during the Great Depression. But to me, the Packard Caribbean is both the ultimate Packard and the ultimate convertible. It's so big and it's so long and it has this panache that other cars just don't quite have. And there's just something so majestic about rolling up in that car and people looking at it and saying, is that a Cadillac or is that a Lincoln? And you say, no, it's a Packard. And I know the Packard Caribbean is a maintenance nightmare. When I was talking to my friend Ross, who restores these things, he told me they refer to the Caribbean as the Bermuda Triangle because the cars have so many problems. You've got the automatically adjusting suspension, you've got the push button transmission, which has all sorts of electrical problems. You have the transmission itself, the Packard Ultramatic, which has all sorts of problems if you don't take care of it. And then of course you have the V8 engine, which Packard rushed through development and you know, there's some quality kinks that need worked out there. But I figure if I'm a gazillionaire who can afford all these old cars, I can probably afford a mechanic to fix them too. In my case, I'd probably hire Ross because he's a genius. So I've got my AMC, my International, and my Packard. Now here's where the list starts to get a little bit more challenging. And my next pick is particularly important because it's the only modern car I have on this list. A 2017 Tesla Model S P100D Ludicrous. And I know that most of my videos are about old cars and the last time I did a Tesla video, nobody watched it because nobody cared but I've always wanted an electric car since I was like eight years old and built them using the little science kit with like the AA batteries and the motor and stuff. Even though I liked driving the Model 3 in that video that nobody watched, I always have liked the Model S better. I just, there's just something about the bigger size of it. I mean, it is a large sedan. And as you know, I'm all about large sedans. So the Model S is, just a car that's always been cool to me. And I think if you're gonna buy a Tesla, you might as well buy the fastest one they make. And I picked a 2017 Model S in particular because I like when they used to list the battery size in the car's name. That's what the P100D means. And I don't need... I also don't need a brand new Tesla with all the self-driving features and autopilot stuff and all that stuff. Like, I just don't care. If I'm buying this car to drive it and enjoy it, yes, it's nice to have lane keeping assist and radar cruise control, but I don't need the car to change lanes automatically and all this nonsense. I'm totally fine driving the car. Now for number one, and this one's hard because even though I said my list is not ranked in any particular order. Number one is not my favorite car. I couldn't decide what to fill this last slot with. So before we get to that, I want to take a minute to include all of the runners up that didn't make it into the fantasy garage. But if I had infinite money and infinite space, I probably would buy these cars too. So what to put in the number one slot? And I went back and forth on this. I thought, should I have another modern car? And then I thought, well, what about a custom car? Could I do some kind of like bizarre engine swap or create some kind of fantasy vehicle? And then I was like, eh, that wouldn't work either. And then it hit me. I can't have a fantasy garage and not include my ambassador. This was my first classic car. It was my attainable fantasy. There's just so many little things about this car that I love. From the vinyl roof, to the butterscotch pudding colored interior, to the wood grain horizontal speedometer, 
to the little eagle and shield crest on the steering wheel. This car is so simple, yet it brings me so much happiness. I'll probably never be able to afford a Rebel machine and a Packard Caribbean and a Tesla P100D, let alone all at once. And so the idea of having a fantasy garage and putting all of these high dollar cars in it is really cool, but I don't think I would feel right if the ambassador wasn't in there with them. So now I'm interested, what's your five car fantasy garage? I'm really curious and I really want you to be original because anybody could be like, oh, I just want five Lamborghinis. But I'm curious about the weird cars, right? Like what's a car that has a sentimental value to you that maybe isn't the most collectible thing in the world? I mean, maybe your first car was a 1989 Ford Tempo four cylinder five speed and you just really want that car back. Whatever you pick, leave it in the comments and I'll be interested to read it. And don't forget to share it with your other car loving friends so they can say what their top five fantasy cars are. I hope you enjoyed this video as a welcome rest from all the talk about COVID-19. And if you're one of the people who has to work in challenging conditions during this time, I want you to know that I'm thankful for all that you do. In the meantime, stay safe, stay healthy, and of course, thanks for watching. <laughs>